Look around you. Every text message you send, every video you watch, every call you make, it all runs on a language of ones and zeros. The world we live in, a world of smartphones, artificial intelligence, streaming, and instant global communication, was once unimaginable. But before Silicon Valley, before the internet, before even the first digital computer, there was a man who saw it all coming. His name was Claude Shannon. Not a billionaire, not a Silicon Valley mogul, just a quiet, unassuming genius with a love for puzzles and a mind that could see the hidden patterns of the universe. He created brain for the computer. He built the foundation that made the internet possible. In the 1940s, when the world still ran on bulky machines and crackling analog signals, Shannon wrote a paper that would change history. He took the messy, unpredictable world of communication and turned it into pure mathematics, a system so powerful that every modern technology today runs on his ideas. Yet, despite his discoveries, his name remains unknown to most. He was not interested in fame, fortune, or the spotlight. Instead, he spent his time building juggling robots, maze solving mice and unicycles, seeing the world not as a place to conquer, but as a playground of endless possibilities. This is the story of the father of the digital age, the man who cracked the code of information itself, then walked away, leaving behind a world transformed by his vision. And it all started in a quiet town in Michigan with a boy who just wanted to tinker with machines. In the quiet town of Petoskey, Michigan in 1916, a boy was born who would one day shape the future of the digital world. But at the time, Claude Shannon was just another child growing up in the small industrial town of Gaylord, where technology was something you could see and touch. Machines, telegraph wires, and crude electrical circuits. His father, Claude Senior, was a businessman, the town's probate judge a man of order and structure. His mother, Mabel Shannon, was a school principal, a woman of knowledge and discipline. Together, they created an environment that encouraged learning, curiosity, and problem solving. But young Claude wasn't interested in school in the way most children were. He didn't just memorize facts, he questioned everything. His mind worked differently, seeing puzzles in everyday objects and trying to figure out how things worked. While other kids played sports or read storybooks, Shannon was building gadgets. He took apart radios, mechanical toys, and even the household telephone just to see how they functioned. If something broke, he didn't panic. He fixed it, often making it even better than before. By the time he was a teenager, he had a fully operational telegraph system strung between his house and his best friends, repurposing barbed wire fences to carry Morse code messages across their neighborhood. It was a primitive homemade network, but it was also his first step toward a life dedicated to information and communication. By the time he reached high school, it was clear that Claude Shannon wasn't like the other students. He excelled in math and science with an ease that baffled his teachers, but his true passion lay outside the classroom in solving problems that no one had even thought to ask. When he graduated in 1932, the world was in the grip of the Great Depression and jobs were scarce. But Shannon wasn't looking for work, he was looking for knowledge. He enrolled at the University of Michigan, one of the leading schools in engineering and mathematics, eager to explore the boundaries of what was possible. Little did he know his journey was about to take a turn that would change the course of history. At the University of Michigan, Shannon found himself surrounded by some of the brightest minds of his time. He pursued degrees in both electrical engineering and mathematics, a combination that was rare at the time but would later become the key to his revolutionary discoveries. It was here that Shannon was first introduced to Boolean algebra, a mathematical system devised by George Boole in the 19th century. Boolean algebra was a strange, abstract concept at the time, a way of expressing logic in mathematical terms using simple true or false values. Most mathematicians viewed it as an obscure theoretical tool with little practical application. Shannon, however, saw something no one else did. At the same time he was learning about Boolean logic, he was also working extensively with electrical circuits, switches, relays and wires, the fundamental components of early telephone and computing systems. One day, a thought struck him. What if electrical circuits could be used to represent Boolean logic? Could a system of switches, turning on and off, actually think in the way that logic worked? This simple idea was profound. At the time, Computers, as we know them, did not exist. The most advanced computing machines were mechanical, slow and imprecise, relying on gears and levers to perform calculations. But Shannon's insight suggested something radically different, a world where machines could process logic using nothing more than electrical switches that turned on and off, much like the ones and zeros of Boolean algebra. By the time he graduated in 1936, 
He had already started sketching out the early versions of this idea, but his next step would take him to a place where these theories would finally come together. That year, Shannon was accepted into the MIT for his master's degree in electrical engineering. He began working as a research assistant under Vannevar Bush, a brilliant scientist who had developed the differential analyzer, one of the most complex mechanical computers of its time. The differential analyzer was massive, a room-sized machine made up of rotating gears, shafts, and mechanical parts. It could solve differential equations, but it was slow and inflexible. It was a perfect example of why computing needed to change. As Shannon studied the machine, he became convinced that gears and mechanical parts were not the future. Instead, he believed that computation could be done through pure electrical circuits, controlled by simple binary logic. If circuits could be arranged to represent logic problems, then machines could compute more efficiently than ever before. In 1937, at just 21 years old, Shannon wrote what would later be called the most important master's thesis of all time. In it, he proved mathematically that Boolean algebra could be applied to circuit design, meaning that any logical operation could be represented using simple on-off switches. In other words, binary code. He had just invented the basis of digital computing. But at the time, no one realized how revolutionary this was. The world had yet to catch up to his ideas, and Shannon, ever the explorer, was already moving forward. His work had caught the attention of some of the greatest minds at MIT, and soon, Bell Labs, the world's leading research facility in telecommunications, came calling. They wanted him to help build the future, and Claude Shannon was more than ready. After his groundbreaking master's thesis at MIT, which proved that electrical circuits could perform logic operations, Shannon's journey led him to the legendary Bell Labs, the epicenter of technological breakthroughs in the early 20th century. At Bell Labs, Shannon was surrounded by some of the greatest minds of his time, scientists and engineers tackling the biggest challenges in communication, cryptography, and computing. Here, he was mentored by Vannevar Bush, the man behind one of the first analog computers, and Alan Turing, the British mathematician who had cracked the Nazi Enigma code and laid the groundwork for theoretical computer science. Shannon's work took a decisive turn during World War II, when he was assigned to work on cryptography. The war had turned information into a weapon. Spies sent coded messages, enemy forces jammed signals, and communication lines were constantly at risk of being intercepted or corrupted. The challenge was clear. How do you send messages reliably over noisy channels? How much information can be packed into a signal before it gets distorted? Could a universal system be created to transmit a text, sound, or images? Shannon didn't just answer these questions. He invented the mathematical foundation of the entire digital world. In 1948, he published his masterpiece, A Mathematical Theory of Communication, which laid out information theory, a field that defined how all digital communication works today. Information theory laid four bricks as a foundation to every piece of technology that we have today. Shannon quantified information for the first time. He introduced the concept of the bit, the fundamental unit of information. Whether it's a letter, a photo, or a song, all data could be broken down into a series of ones and zeros. Until this point, communication technology was based on analog signals, which were prone to noise and distortion. Shannon's theory showed that digital signals, or what it known as binary data, could be transmitted flawlessly, no matter the noise level, as long as error correction codes were used. He calculated the maximum amount of information that can be sent over a channel without losing accuracy, a concept still used in every modern communication system, from fiber optics to Wi-Fi and 5G networks. He showed how to correct errors in transmission by adding extra data, an innovation that allows computers to store and transmit information reliably, whether it's a NASA signal from deep space or a simple text message. His discoveries weren't just theoretical. They paved the way for digital computing, the internet, and artificial intelligence. Without Shannon, there would be no CDs, DVDs, MP3s, zip files, or modern encryption. But Shannon wasn't done yet. Having laid the foundation for digital communication, Shannon turned to another question that fascinated him. If machines can process information, can they think? In the early 1950s, Shannon became the first scientist to seriously study AI. He believed that machines could mimic human thought if they were given enough data and computational power, an idea that would later inspire the field of machine learning. He built the first ever chess playing computers, which could analyze moves and strategies, a precursor to today's AI driven chess engines like AlphaZero. Even more impressively, he designed a tiny mechanical mouse, Theseus, which could navigate a maze by itself. This was one of the first examples of machine learning, 
decades before AI became mainstream. Hello, I'm Claude Shannon, a mathematician here at the Bell Telephone Laboratories. This is Thesus. Thesus is an electrically controlled mouse. He has the ability to solve a certain class of problems by trial and error means and then remember the solution. In other words, he can learn from experience. Like his classical namesake, Thesus has the problem of finding his way through a maze. But Shannon was more than just a scientist. He was a playful genius. He saw the world as a puzzle to be solved. While the rest of the world marveled at his theories, he was busy building a machine that could juggle, creating a wearable computer that helped him win at roulette in Las Vegas, which is the first example of wearable tech, riding unicycles around Bell Labs for fun, designing a useless machine that did nothing but turn itself off. A joke that paved the way for automation process of the digital world. His mind was one of contradictions, a mathematician obsessed with numbers, yet a free-spirited inventor who saw science as play. Despite his groundbreaking discoveries, Shannon had no interest in money or fame. As the world started embracing digital technology in the 1970s and 80s, he quietly stepped away, preferring to spend his time tinkering with puzzles, unicycles, and homemade gadgets. He had unlocked the secrets of digital communication, AI, and computing, but instead of seeking power, he returned to his original passion, play and discovery. By the 1970s, his contributions to information theory, digital circuits, and AI has reshaped the world. But his name remained largely unknown outside of academy. The digital revolution was unfolding. Computers were becoming smaller, faster, and more accessible. The foundations of the internet, personal computers, and artificial intelligence, all of it traced back to him. But he was nowhere to be found in Silicon Valley or corporate boardrooms. While others built billion-dollar empires on the ideas he pioneered, he spent his days in quiet, playful exploration. To Shannon, the world had never been about competition or power. It was about curiosity, about solving puzzles, just for the joy of it. And so, as his ideas transformed civilization, he simply disappeared from public life, living comfortably in Massachusetts with his wife, Betty, who had been his unwavering partner for decades. But his absence did not mean his impact had faded. His legacy lives in every text message, every email, every video call, every piece of information that travels invisibly through the air across the planet. And yet, the most remarkable thing about Shannon was not just what he invented, but how he lived. I guess it uh, must seem pretty funny if a grown man has a room full of toys. <laughs> My life's work. <laughs>